comes to your mind when you first talk of birds the most fashion and brightly colored peacock the graceful movement of the birds of paradise and the melodious songs of the songbirds these winged and feathered aves form a very important part of an ecosystem birds play a vital role in the health of ecosystem through their actions like pollination seed dispersion predators scavengers and as prey for other species so in today's episode we'll be exploring the avifauna of tadoba a varied species of 300 in tadoba is an indication of a good biological wealth talking of birds and how can we forget the bird man of india dr salim ali a pioneer in conducting systematic bird survey across india so well viewers let's begin birding at tadoba by visiting various water bodies i hope you enjoy this beautiful wings of tadoba Birds live in diverse habitats such as forest, mountain, deserts and yes of such kind water bodies Such type of habitat would include all four necessities for a bird's survival that is food water shelter and nesting area We will chiefly focus on the middle and the lower story of this kind of habitat where we will often find mixed foraging parties of insectivorous birds such as indian paradise flycatchers and the black nape monarch they typically share a same kind of habitat which includes light deciduous jungles with bamboo clad ravines The black nape monarch is a slim and agile passerine bird belonging to the family of monarch flycatchers. The male has distinctive black patch on the back of the head and also has a black necklace like band. This beautiful pair starts breeding in summer from May to July. The one sitting on the left is the female black nape monarch which is lacking the black marking on the head. This is the Indian paradise flycatcher female with rufous wings, black head and short tail. These birds have medium length greyish bluish bill hooked at the end and which is surrounded by stiff rictal bristles. Look at those beautiful eyes. The eyes are surrounded by an eye ring which is a beautiful blue thin wattle. And also very interestingly the inside of the mouths of paradise flycatchers a brightly yellow colored the agile fairy like movements of the male as he twists and turns in the air after flies with his ribbons looping or trailing behind is a spectacle of exquisite charm we found a nest which is compactly woven cup shaped This nest has been made of fine grasses and fibers plastered outside with cob webs. The Indian paradise flycatcher and the black nape monarch share a very similar kind of nesting pattern like the one we are seeing built in the elbow of a twig. So we will just wait and watch whose nest is this. So now we know whose property is this. It is the Indian paradise flycatcher. They generally lay eggs 3 to 5 which have a creamy pink spectacle and blotched with reddish brown.
both sexes share duties but the female does the major part their nesting season is from february to july the bird is protecting the nest and the eggs from this strong windy weather A very interesting behavior of a pair of Indian pitta was noticed where the bird visited one tree after the other in search of a suitable nesting site listen very carefully it has also uttered two different calls this one double whistle call which the bird often makes and the second one and is waiting for a response These calls are generally made by pairs to call upon and inspect the selected nesting site. Interesting, isn't it? So once this site is selected, the pair will build its nest from May to August. The red-vented bulbul is easily identified by its short crest giving the head a squarish appearance the body is dark brown with a scaly pattern while the head is darker or black the rump is white while the vent is red red-vented bulbuls feed majorly on fruits petals of flowers nectar insects and occasionally geckos they are important dispersers of seeds of plants These birds breed from June to September. The pied crested cuckoo or the Jacobin's cuckoo is a brood parasite of the species. The red-vented bulbul was among the first animals other than humans that was found to be incapable of synthesizing vitamin C. Rungos are mostly black or dark grey short leg birds with an upright stance when perched. They have four tails and some have elaborated tail decorations. Like here we can see the greater racket tail rongo, a passerine bird quenching its thirst. They come to the TATR in every summer. Drongos give alarm calls 
and many animals and birds respond to the drongo's alarm calls, which often warn of them the presence of predators. They even imitate those of many species. 51 different calls are known to be imitated. Drongos are aggressive and fearless birds. They even attack on other birds. Like here we can see the white bellied drongos are attacking orange headed thrush. Kingfishers, quite possible the most appropriately named birds. These heavy beak birds are found all over the world. There are three subspecies of kingfisher, tree kingfisher, river kingfisher and the water kingfisher. This is a common kingfisher a subspecies from the river kingfisher. These are also known as Eurasian kingfishers. Common kingfishers is widely distributed over Europe, Asia and North Africa. Male and females are generally similar, but this one you are seeing is a male which has a completely black bill. This is a female common kingfisher. Look at its beak. It's not complete black. It has a red base. This is a pied kingfisher, species of water kingfisher which is widely distributed across Africa and Asia. These kingfishers mainly feed on fishes. They usually hunt by hovering on the water. Pied kingfishers are the largest bird in the world which hover at place. They beat their wings 8 times per second. Observe the georgette pattern on the breast of the bird, which is broken in the middle. This is a female, while the males have a double black band.
This one is a species from tree kingfishers known as the white-throated kingfishers which are widely distributed in Asia. These kingfishers perch conspicuously on the branches within its territory. Oh look what the bird is feeding on. It's a small crab. They also feed on small reptiles, amphibian and also some small rodents. The white-throated kingfishers begin breeding at the onset of monsoons. The male perch on prominent high posts and call by flicking their tails, raise their bills high and display their white throat. And in return, the female in invitation makes such rapid calls. So next time when you wait at water holes, also observe those mud tunnels at the adjoining walls of the water hole. These are nothing but the nests of the kingfisher. Here we are watching a little cormorant, a glistering black duck-like water bird with a longish stiff tail and slender compressed bill sharply look hook at the tip. A small white patch on throat and suggestion of a crest at the back of the head. Its sexes are alike and we can watch them singly or gregariously at the tanks, jails, etc. They are distributed throughout the Indian subcontinent. Many times we can saw them satiated perches upright on the rock or a stake near water, drying itself with outstretched wings. Here the cormorant is trying to get a catch and here, here is it, he got a fish. Darter a long-necked and a long-tailed swimmers of Indian Union, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Myanmar. Often seen perched on a snag above the water with its wings half spread to dry. This bird can vary its buoyancy in water, sometimes swimming with only head and neck above water earning it the nickname of snake bird. Often solitary when feeding, it roosts in group and nests in colonies. This bird rather looks like a cormorant when perched, but not in flight. When the long tail may be spread wide as the anhinga soars, high on outstretched wings. Snake birds are silent at most times, but around nesting colonies, they make various croaking and clicking sounds.
raptors or birds of prey include the species of birds that primarily hunt and feed on different kind of birds and vertebrates all of the vultures ospreys kites hawks owls buzzards harriers falcons are included in the category of raptors we sighted many raptors during our patrolling in this week Here we can see a short-toed eagle flying away. White eye buzzard quenching its thirst. Honey buzzard resting on chamund tree. Juvenile crested hawk eagle searching for the food. Here we are watching a crested hawk eagle with its keel. The term raptor is derived from the Latin word rapio, meaning to seize or take taken by the force. Here we can witness the raptors have a keen eyesight for detecting the food at a distance or during their flight. They have the strong feet. equipped with the talons for grasping prey and have powerful curved beaks for tearing the flesh even the smooth coat or its small scale bones of the tree shrew are not deterring the eagle from enjoying the food here we can see the crested hawk eagle is feeding on rodent it started from its head this scene is as fascinating as the tiger hunting and killing its strong beak is enough to tear the intestine from the body and see it almost engulf the lower body of the prey it is cleaning its claws then cleaning its beak and now it is moving downward to drink water
it's drinking ample amount of water yeah much needed after the heavy meal The bird that you see perched on the tree here is a black winged kite or a black shouldered kite. These small raptors have a wingspan of less than 1 meter across. Black shouldered kites are often seen hovering about the fields using their excellent eyesight to find small prey such as mice and grasshoppers. They usually live by themselves or in pairs but during mouse plagues they can gather in very large numbers. It is estimated that the average kite will eat about 1000 mice every year. At the breeding time, the males bring food to the female in flight which she takes from him while flying upside down. Here, the kite has glided down looking for water and it is found perched very close to a lake. When summer temperatures soar, it's easy for the people to retreat into the air-conditioned places to stay cool. Increasing mercury in Vidarbha region affects the flora and fauna of TATR in many ways. Birds don't have ACs but have different tricks to beat the heat, taking advantage of their surroundings as well as their own instincts. Like dogs, birds can pant to cool down. When a bird pants, it breathes quickly, moving air across the moist surfaces of its lungs, throat and mouth. This moisture then evaporates which absorbs the heat from the bird's body. Each time the bird breathes out, some of this heat is carried outside leaving the bird feeling cooler. Even by bathing in water or dust, resting during afternoons, or by fluffing feathers, birds can cool down themselves.
The common wood shrike is dully ashy brown and like other wood shrikes has a large head with a strong hook beak. They have a broad creamy brow above a dark cheek patch and white outer tail feathers contrasting with their dark tail. They are usually found in pairs. They have a loud whistling song made of several notes. They have a loud song consisting of several rapid whistling notes. They feed on mainly on insects and sometimes berries by gleaning mostly along branches and leaves within trees but sometimes also make aerial salads or descend to the grounds. The wire-tailed swallow is a small passerine bird in the swallow family. This bird is found in open country near water and human habitation. It breeds in Africa, south of the Sahara and in tropical southern Asia from the Indian subcontinent. Wire-tailed swallows are fast flyers and they generally feed on insects, especially flies while airborne. They are typically seen low over water with which they are more closely associated than most swallows. The neat half bowl nests are lined with mud collected in the swallow's beaks. They are placed on vertical surfaces near water, under cliff ledges or more commonly on man-made structures such as buildings and bridges. The male and female have similar appearances but the female has shorter wires. The clutch is up to five eggs. These birds are solitary and territorial nesters, unlike many swallows, which tend to be colonial. The wire-tailed swallow is a small swallow measuring about 18 centimeters in length. It has bright blue upper parts bright white underparts and a chestnut cap. Immature birds lack tail wires and have dull brown caps. The species is named for the very long filamentous outermost tail feathers. It trails behind like two wires. The sexes are similar in appearance but the female has a shorter wires. Here you can see the adults, the chicks, the fledglings and also other colonial members who have come close to the lake. They have been extremely cautious of the much larger birds including the red wattle lappings. Here we see four adults on the perch close to the water body. The black winged stills are usually identified with their long pink legs and a long thin black bill. Some populations are migratory and move to the ocean coasts in the winter. Those in warmer regions are generally resident or short range migrants. These birds pick up their food from sand or water. They mainly eat insects and crustaceans. Here you can see the black winged stilt taking a dip in the water. Often in the early mornings and in the late evenings, you get to see the black winged stilts doing this. This is just to keep the feathers clean from the insects and other dust particles. You can also see him preening at the moment. The black winged stills are gregarious birds. They roost in small groups but spread out while foraging. Both male and female choose the nest site. It is often located on a small island in the marsh.
many of us are familiar with woodpeckers. A bird who continuously strike the tree trunk with its beak. The species of woodpecker we are watching here is white neck woodpecker. It's a couple. One with the red hind crown and crest is male. Another with the yellow hind crown and crest is female. This species have prominent white colored V shape on its back. It has exactly opposite color features than that of golden back woodpecker. Keen observer can identify the difference easily. White nape woodpeckers are found in open deciduous forests and in bamboo thickets. They mostly nest and roost in holes that they exhibit in tree trunk. Here we can see golden flame back woodpecker. The one with the red crest is a male and the another with yellow crest is a female. Very peculiar pear shaped holes exhibited one upon another are of white nape woodpecker's home. We can see here almost 13 holes exhibited on an old coconut family tree. The pair gives a single white colored egg in one such hole. They might be building such large number of nests to escape from raptors and snakes. Here we can see the pair taking lot of efforts to build their nests. Male is repairing their home from inside. Male is peeping from one hole might be asking female to hurry up. These are the purple sunbirds. The breeding male is a metallic blue and purple overall with maroon feathers on the breast and the female is olive above and yellow below. Like other sunbirds, they feed mainly on nectar although they will also take insects especially when they are feeding young. They have a fast and direct flight 
and can take nectar by hovering like a hummingbird but often perch at the base of the flowers. The purple swampin is a large drill. It is mainly dusky black above with a broad dark blue collar and dark blue to purple below. As the purple swamp hen walks, it flicks its tail up and down revealing its white undertail. The purple swamp hen is found around the freshwater swamps, streams and marshes. The diet of the purple swamp hen includes the soft shoots of reeds and rushes and small animals such as frogs and snails. However, it is reputed egg stealer and will also eat ducklings when it can catch them. This is a pair of red collared doves. The one that you see perched below is the male which has a reddish body with a greyish head and the one above is the female. Often it is rare to find these in Tadoba. Unlike the spotted dove, laughing dove and Eurasian collared dove, these red collared doves are seen majorly during the summer months in Taduba. Like the other dove species, they majorly feed on the seeds and grains and most of the times found in the outskirts or the periphery of the park. Today we have a wood sandpiper which is found in the shallow water picking with its bill. They are the most abundant migratory wader in non-coastal areas of Asia. Wood sandpipers feed mainly on aquatic insects and their larvae and mollusks in moist or dry mud. They also swim well and may feed by sweeping their bill from side to side under water. Wood sandpipers are monogamous and territorial birds. The breeding season occurs between May and mid-July. Although they begin occupying their breeding habitat by late April, the breeding areas include boreal forests, grassy marshes and scrublands. Males use their plumage to attract mates. When breeding, these birds disperse into solitary pairs. Wood sandpipers display territorial behavior during breeding season. When choosing a mate, birds occasionally lock bills and fight. Once a mate is chosen, the pair progresses towards the nesting period. The idea behind this special birds episode was to encourage everyone and especially children to observe different birds around them, understand their sounds and ecology and take small conservation steps so that we are not in a situation where nobody even thought a common bird like sparrow would clinch on a verge of extinction and we would even require to celebrate a world sparrow day. Birds play vital role in the health of ecosystem through their actions as pollinators, seed dispersers, predators, scavengers and as prey for other species. So today we saw varied wings of Tadoba in their suitable habitats. So if provided with proper space, food and their habitat, wildlife can thrive anywhere. Stay alert, stay safe, Jai Hind. Stay alert, stay safe, Jai Hind. Stay alert, stay safe, Jai Hind. Satarkaraha, Garira, Jai Hind. Stay alert, stay safe, Jai Hind.